Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is the first official video of 2023 and I'm so excited to be continuing to make videos for you. This video, as I promised in my live video, is going to be all about the Sigma L-Mount 16-28 to f2.8. I'm gonna go practically use this lens how I would use any other lens, shoot some b-roll, maybe take some photos and see where the day goes, but I'm just gonna take you guys with me and you can see what it's like using the Lumix. Other news, super exciting. Today, guys, the Mark II camera is officially out, which is super exciting. I will be pre-ordering that as soon as I freaking can because the Lumix S5 is an insane camera. The autofocus, I mean, you guys be the judge right now how good it is. I'm excited for the phase detection autofocus in the Mark II. Let me know what brought you to this video down in the comments. Are you guys Lumix users or curious about it? Um, you should be, they're pretty incredible. So the main reason that I picked up the 16 to 28 Sigma was because I was hoping to replace this lens. And this is the Lumix 20 to 60 that comes. It's the kit lens that comes on the Lumix. So I was hoping the 16 to 28 could be a good replacement for this. And what I like about the 16 to 28 is it has a constant aperture of 2.8 throughout the focal length. So this is gonna be a great lens for real estate, vlogging, studio work. So for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Alex and typically we teach you guys how to shoot and use your cameras using automotives as our main niche. So this is one great example of how I use my camera all the time, which is inside of a car as a vlogger. Now one quick hack that I use with the Lumix because the autofocus isn't perfect is there's a little button on the front of this camera and because it's within arm's reach, I can just tap this button and I've custom set it to autofocus lock. So now the focus is locked where it was previously set and I can move around and you'll see it's not pulling focus on me, but back here it's totally locked. So as a vlogger, I mean, your arm length is hopefully not gonna change while shooting. So you can always hold it out, press that button, and then you know you're always gonna have manual and good focus on your face while that's locked on. So if we turn it back on, then I can move up to the camera. It'll pull focus, hopefully. And there you go. Another great feature about the Lumix S5 and having a wide angle lens is that the in-body image stabilization is absolutely incredible. So for automotive vloggers like myself, I don't know how well it looks on there right now. I can see the camera shaking quite a bit, but on these roads, it actually is a great camera to just mount on your car and get really cool cinematic shots. So now we've got Boost IS image stabilization on. We're shooting at 20 millimeters and we're seeing how well this handles it. I'm leaving the autofocus on so you guys can see when and if it struggles and we'll review the footage in post after I go and do some shooting and we can talk about how good this lens works with the Lumix system. All right, so we've made it to our location. We've got the car nicely cleaned up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera onto my gimbal and we're gonna do some moves around the car just like we would with any other camera and see how well this lens, the autofocus, works with the S5 and automotive videography. Okay, this is 16 millimeters, not recommended for automotive, but we're setting the scene here. All right, so we're currently shooting 24 frames per second, 10 bit 422, and we're gonna see how well the gimbal handles this with the autofocus. We're gonna try to do some tracking up to the car, around the car, pick some different things, and we'll see how well the autofocus works. Then we'll switch over to 60 frames per second, see how well that performs. I think a focal length of 16 millimeters would be Good for like interior work. Come on, focus. Focus on something. Okay, I just switched the autofocus to 225 area and we're gonna see how well it does focusing on its own. Okay, so now that we're at 20 mil, and I've had to stop down to f4.0 with a shutter angle of 1 over 80, still at 24 frames per second. Okay, so we've switched to a 24 millimeter focal length, which is actually a really popular focal length. So to be able to get that all in one lens is pretty cool. This is probably the widest I would typically go with automotive if I'm shooting B-roll, because it doesn't distort the car, which I'm sure you've heard before, unless you're going for like a mean look or you want to make the back wing look like really big. You could go out to 16 and make that big wing look good if you have one of those. I obviously don't. Back to 24. 
Okay, so I'm gonna be curious to get this back in post because I can't really see how well it's focusing on the small screen. But I am gonna switch over to 60 frames per second so we can do some FPV mode stuff. And I'll probably use a focal length between 24 and 28 millimeters because I think that'll be more flattering for the car. So let's do that. Okay, so we've just done some B-roll. I'm gonna switch over, take some photos. I did plan to bring a GoPro, and I did, but it's dead, and I charged it yesterday, so I've gotta get that sorted out. But I'm gonna put some photos up on the screen here, mostly shooting between 24 and 28, because I don't really wanna go much wider than that. But hopefully, it'll give you guys a good idea of how this lens looks for photography, if you're looking to use it for that purpose. So after looking through a lot of this footage, I didn't notice any focus jumping any worse than I would have seen on my previous camera, the Canon R6. When I was driving in the car, there was a couple of jumps and it does struggle in what looks like backlit situation. But we already kind of know this about using contrast for autofocus detection. But when it came to shooting the B-roll of the vehicle, I was very impressed with how well it stuck on focus. Again, no worse than my previous cameras in the Canon R6. There were a couple moments here that the footage did not really know where to focus but it came back quick and when it is in focus this camera looks absolutely insane it's so gorgeous specifically the 60 frames per second stuff it does have a crop factor of about 1.5 times when you're shooting in 60 frames per second at 4k but the great thing about shooting with a 16 to 28 lens is that essentially because you're shooting at a 1.5 times crop factor you're turning that lens then into a 24 to 42, correct my math if I'm wrong, but those are all great focal lengths to be shooting 60 frames per second B-roll at. Another thing that I really loved about using this lens, specifically once I mounted it on the gimbal, is that all those focal lengths are internal. So when you change between 16 all the way through 28, you're not changing the balance of that lens at all. It's all happening internally in the lens, so it keeps your gimbal balanced really, really nicely. In reviewing the photos from this camera, I find them to be incredibly sharp. They look great. I have no gripes at all. I did shoot a lot at the 28 millimeter range and I found that to be the sweet spot. Anything past I think like 20 mils I would use as long as you're not too close to the car. The closer you get, the wider you are, the more kind of bulgy it's going to get as we said earlier. And one thing that I did like when I was shooting inside the car was that you could actually have a pretty great minimum focusing distance. You can get the camera quite close to the details of the car. Now don't mind these dirty details because again Again, this is middle of the winter and this car needs a detail desperately so apologies for that the build quality of sigma glass is well known you know you're going to get a little bit of a heavier lens but it's built very well it feels great the quality is good to work with i'm super happy with this lens the other lens that i was looking into was the native lumix 18 millimeter prime you then get 1.8 aperture which would be so nice but what's good about the lumix series and the s5 specifically is that you get dual native iso so having the aperture of 2.8 and then the option of being able to crank your ISO to 4000. This has been more than enough light that I've needed to do any like dark basement real estate for example or car interiors or any nighttime photography or videography. I think having that 2.8 aperture is more than enough and at all those focal lengths, it's pretty valuable. If you guys are looking for a great wide angle lens, I do think that this should be one of the top contenders. If you're asking me if you should get the 18 mil prime with an F 1.8 or the 16 to 28 at a 2.8 aperture, well, this is the lens that I bought. So that's my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt, guys. You need to go with which lens is right for you. Now, if you guys are curious why I did switch from the Canon R6 to the Lumix S5, you can check that video out up here. And if you're interested in the Lumix S5 or S5 II series, consider subscribing because I did just pre-order the new Lumix S5 Mark II. Hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace. Yeah.